Hey everyone. So uh, today I'm just going to go harvest some stuff out of the garden. We can make it out back there, but we have a cooler sitting out in front of the house. Let's see, underneath the flag over there. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the reason we have a cooler sitting out in front of the house is because tropical storm, or I guess it was at one point a hurricane, but tropical storm or tropical depression, Debbie passed by our house uh, last Friday and decided to knock our power out. So pretty much all of northern Vermont was pretty hard hit. And uh, we ended up having no power for almost three days. So we had to put a bunch of stuff in coolers because, you know, the refrigerator wasn't working. So um, kind of a bummer. Yeah, it was a it was a tough couple days. No water because we have a well. All right, so pump wasn't running. Um, no electrical, of course, because we had no power. So uh, luckily we have some friends that have a whole house generator and they let us come take showers. That was very nice of them. But, uh, but we got by. It's pretty nice weather out. You know, lows are cool so we could open the windows. Uh, the only real problem that I had was the crickets and the frogs were so loud. They were waking me up all night, every night. But um, anyway, today we're looking at uh, just picking some stuff. Uh, we have a lot of tomatoes ready. We have a lot of uh, ground cherries ready. We started picking... Um, sweet corn so we'll probably pick some more of that and take a look at our potatoes i think the potatoes are getting very close to being ready to harvest some uh, we probably have a bunch of peppers and i think we have a cabbage and a cauliflower that we also need to to harvest so yeah i'm gonna flip the camera around we're gonna do a little bit of uh garden picking here's the tomatoes um the storm came through made a mess i didn't have things um nearly picked up high enough and uh the tomatoes are all falling over so i don't know what's going on with these tomatoes but they are just all rotting on the vine it's this one variety here we have a few of these tomatoes they are just all totally rotting so i've just been throwing these to the side and we'll give those to the chickens to pick through but we haven't gotten any good tomatoes off of these plants just because they keep rotting before they're ready i, I don't really know what's going on um, as I mentioned in previous video, we've got still uh, some damage left from those um, tomato hornworms. I haven't seen any more tomato hornworms on the plants. I'm sure there's probably still one or two out here somewhere, but um, they haven't been at least as many and they're not as visible. And you can see some of the plants are coming back where they were chewed back. So I think we got that problem under control. See here's another one that was chewed back, but we've got some fresh leaves coming in, same here. This whole, tree, you know, this whole plant was chewed back pretty heavily. So the plants are healing up, which is good. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on with those tomatoes. They're, they're a problem. Um, you can see here, we had a pepper plant come down. This is from during the storm. Uh, the weather knocked this guy over. Uh, there's no peppers on here right now. So we'll just throw this one to the side, take care of that later. Um, you can see some of these peppers down here though are definitely um, you know, needing to be picked off. So this, this branch came off and has a bunch of peppers. So we'll go ahead and pull all these off. Taking care of these peppers is pretty easy. You just pinch them off. Uh, that one's got a little hole in it, so we'll throw it to the side. Um, it's a bummer that this plant fell, but to be honest with you, we have so many peppers right now that it's not going to be that big of a problem. Um, there's probably no way that we can eat all the peppers that we currently have. I've got um, jalapenos growing in the garden here as you can see um i've got some already fermenting to make jalapeno hot sauce with uh, we've also made a bunch of cowboy candy which is uh, candied pickled jalapenos we're gonna make more of that so we just have so many peppers these peppers have just done amazing this year like i can't even stress how amazing these peppers have done uh, this is a, a different pepper i didn't mean i actually picked that but that's all right black spot but that'll be all right so let's see if we got any in these this plant here is very very heavy in foliage and very light in peppers this is one of our original um heirloom varieties that we usually grow i think the dog wants in so let's let the dog in real fast 
Come on, bud. Come on, let's go. He likes to come in here and hang out with me when I'm working in the garden. All right, bud, watch out. So, yeah, so this variety here has not really produced much in the way of peppers. A lot of foliage, as you can see, tons and tons of foliage, but not much in the way of peppers. It's kind of a bummer. I really like those. They're a sweet pepper. Um, they're a Macedonian pepper. Big, big uh, green pods that turn bright red after a while. But we just didn't get very many of those this year. So pick another one of these jalapenos here. See, these jalapenos are good sized. And these plants are just growing like crazy. Um, a lot of peppers in here. I'll pick them out. You can also notice that we got a bunch of red tomatoes. Some more down there. I'm going to pick through those here in a minute. Um, I'm going to see if I can get any of these off of here. They look like they're probably also rotten. It's these yellow tomatoes. Um, and I don't know if you can make it out from here, but if you look on the ground down there, you can see all those cher ground cherries. The ground cherries just fall off the plant when they're ripe. So I got to get in there from the other side and start picking out ground cherries. We probably have, you know, a couple pounds of ground cherries in there. And ground cherries make terrific jelly. Uh, we make gr ground cherry jam. We really, really enjoy it. It's a delif delicious snack. Uh, if you, I like to have peanut butter and jelly uh, pretty regularly for lunch. Um, I know, I'm a grown man, but whatever, hey. It's cheap, it's fast, it's easy. And I work from home and, you know, sometimes making a snack while you're on a call is not easy to do. So if I can make that snack while I'm on a call, you know, mute myself, then that's what I'll do. Uh, so I use the ground cherry jam for sandwiches. They taste good. We make it at home. So it's, it's something that we have on the shelf and it's ready whenever I want it. Um, all right. So I'm going to pick peppers here fill this up and then i'll check back in when we get ready to do some uh ground cherries i'll also pull a few tomatoes off so there's what we got for tomatoes and peppers um and also one more worm uh tomato horn worm that guy is going to the chickens on my way back to the house and then some of these are all rotten so these yellow ones just keep getting bad. I don't know what kind of bug is eating them, but something's eating into them. And the dog messing around. What's up, bud? Oh, having fun? Okay, so now that we got those, let's take a look at our tomatillos and our ground cherries. So the tomatillos are growing very well. We have a lot of tomatillos on here. As I mentioned before, we didn't have a ton that was ripe. But we start looking down here. You can see some of these are definitely ripening up. There we go. So we have a few in here that are ripening up at the bottom. So I can look in there and see them. They're starting to split, they're turning purple. So these ones are finally becoming ready. I gotta say these tomatillos got out of control. I'm surprised at how big they grow. I mean, they are just gigantic. These plants, I, I don't know if this is normal or if this is a different, um, you know, just, this variety does this. I've never grown tomatillos before, so this is my first time. But these things grow like mad. Looking in here, I can see that we definitely have some that are ripe. They're blushing purple. Some on the ground that fell that are ripe. So I'm just going to pick these. Um, I'm going to start picking these, and then I'll be back. Uh, you know, you watch me pick them. Won't be that exciting, but I'll show you what we get here in a minute. Okay, so I think I got most of the uh, tomatillos that were, you know, popping out of their shells. So I was picking any that are splitting the shell. Look pretty good. Make some uh, salsa verde with those. Now it's on to the ground cherries, and ground cherries are similar to tomatillos in the fact that they grow in a very similar fashion, right? These are ground cherries, and these are tomatillos. As you can tell, they look very similar. Tomatillo is just a little bit bigger. Uh, but the difference with ground cherries is that they turn color for you. So like this one here is yellow. When they're yellow, they'll very easily pop off the plant and you can pick them up. Um, if they don't turn, or you know, if they turn yellow and you didn't get a chance to pick them, like there's probably a whole bunch in here because I haven't come out for a week or so. You'll notice that on the ground, 
there's ground cherries. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's why they get the name ground cherry because they just drop on the ground and then you can just pick them up. Uh, these are good, even though they were on the ground, the paper protects them. You can see that they're still perfectly good inside that paper. And these are nice and sweet. These are um, almost like a pineapple-y flavored, almost tomato-y, like a mix between a pineapple and a tomato. Very sweet, lots of teeny little itty bitty seeds. Um, yeah, think of like a miniature tomato or a miniature tomatillo. Uh, they taste really good though. So what I gotta do now is just go through here and pick all these guys up. Uh, so this is a little bit of work, right? Cause you gotta get into this plant. And as I said earlier, and you know, some of our other videos, I've never grown tomatillos or ground cherries before. We got some ground cherries from a friend last year, really liked them. So we decided to grow some this year. I didn't know how big these plants were gonna get. These plants get gigantic. I don't know if it's just these varieties, like I said earlier about the tomatillos, or if that's just the way they grow. Maybe these are just that way. I know when I planted these early in the year, I was like, oh, they look a little scrawny and they're small. I'm not sure they're gonna take off. Well, boy, did they ever. They took off and have gotten so big, like there's just no containing them. You know, each plant is probably four or five feet across. You know, just gigantic. There's only, I think three tomat or cherry ground cherries here. So they go from way down there to there. And then there's three tomatillos up there. These plants just grow crazy. So, all right, I'm gonna pick these. We'll come back in a minute, talk about that harvest. And then we'll go look at some cabbage and some sweet corn. Well, I think we got a good amount of ground cherries. I gotta say, they are a bit of a pain to harvest. Um, it's not super enjoyable to harvest ground cherries. The reason being is that they really do just fall down to the ground and you got to get in there and get them from in between the plants and as you can see these plants are huge and spread out everywhere so getting them out of there is just work you know you really do got to get in there you got to be careful that you're not breaking the plants and you got to kind of weave your way into the, the bush there to get them out so not a not a fun job picking the ground cherries not as easy as picking tomatoes or peppers for sure being that, you know, the peppers and tomatoes are easy to access. The plants don't get so gangly and huge. You know, if you can find some like this one here that are pretty ready and you can pick it, that's easy. But the vast majority of them, you're not gonna find like that. You're gonna find them on the ground like these two and you're gonna pick those. Um, there's just so many under the plant itself that you really do gotta get in there and work on it. Just not easy to do. So, um, all right, well, anyway, we got a good deal of uh, these ground cherries now, as you can see. I would like to point out that this tomato hornworm didn't miss a beat. I, you know, picked him up off the tomato plant, put him on there on a pepper stalk, and he's trying to eat the pepper stalk. Those guys are just ravenous. They just don't stop. One thing I will show you is that these potatoes, the first portion of these potatoes at least, looks like it's pretty much ready. These guys are all dried out. They're kind of died back. They look like they're ready to harvest. The next batch here, not so much. These are still green. They still got a little bit of growth on them. Although you can see, we're still in the midst of dealing with Colorado potato beetles, which I just hate. These guys are just a constant source of annoyance on the potato crop here. Um, and you know, if I leave it for even a couple days, like I hadn't, Picked these guys for I think four days since the the last day before the the, the tropical storm came. Um, you know, here we are, just looking at the plants. I can pick up piles and piles of these guys. Here's three more. So we're gonna squish these, get rid of them, because I don't want these guys eating and laying ba babies all over my plants. Because then you get these things which are the most gross, nasty little buggers. So, okay, I'm gonna clean my hand off in the grass here because I just squished those and I don't like that orange goo all over my fingers. As clean as that's gonna get being out here. Okay, so uh, from our last video, you saw that we picked a bunch of these onions. As you can see, these have all started to fall over. So in another day or two, I'll come out here and I'll harvest the rest of these and we'll put them over 
with the others that have already been harvested, but our onion crop is pretty much done for the year here. It's great. We got a terrific harvest. All of these onions bulbed out huge. I mean, some of these guys are really big. You know, like these are good size onions. I'm very happy with that crop. Uh, the next thing I want to pick is this cabbage right here. This guy has gotten really big. It's the last one of those pointy cabbages. These three here are still looking good. I don't think that I need to harvest them for another couple days maybe. Um, they're not totally solid yet. So really with cabbages, well, this one's pretty solid. What you want to wait for is for them to feel really, really, really solid. When they're really solid, that's when they're ready. So these three still have some time to go. Maybe that one would be ready, but I might leave it a couple more days. This one is definitely ready though. This guy is bigger than any of the other ones. You can see he's starting to split, which is not good. We don't want that to happen. So it's time to harvest that. The rest of these brassicas, and you can see I haven't weeded since last week and it's already crazy out here, but the rest of these brassicas are doing okay. This cauliflower is a little past its prime, I think. Some of these cauliflower went from nothing to huge in like no time at all. We didn't get a chance to pick them all. But this one right here is ready. I'm gonna take that guy out. And we should start getting some in these, I'm hoping. We haven't gotten anything in this variety yet. Uh, hopefully at some point here, we'll start getting some because it would be great to get something out of these plants. And then finally, we still have some beans down here, but the beans, I've kind of just let, let go. I'm giving up on them. Uh, we ate some green beans. They were good. They're still in here. You can see there's purple beans right here. Um, we might get one more harvest out of that, but I think I might just let those go. The goal really at this point is to kind of finish this up. I'm gonna finish out these brassicas. Uh, we have some collards here. We'll probably eat some collards a few times. Definitely eat some more kale. Get those, heart, those cabbages and these cauliflowers harvested. And then we're gonna plow this over. Uh, my goal at the end of the season here is to harvest all the stuff up there, and then I'm gonna scrape this entire area with the tractor. I'm, I'm really kind of tired of fighting with all of these weeds. This grass has like long shoots that come out of it. I want the grass as far away from the garden as possible. So I'm gonna build a several foot perimeter around the whole garden. I'm just gonna scrape this whole thing, bring it to dirt, fill it in with a bunch of manure, and then I'm gonna try and get some wood chips, or if not, I'll at least put down some fabric, some landscape fabric to make a border all around the area that we garden in so that none of this has any direct contact to this, um, this grass. This grass is great for feeding um, animals. You know, it's a good pasture grass. It's very re um, resilient, which is great for grass, but not great when you wanna try to keep it out of your garden because it just spreads quickly. You know, this line was back here at the beginning of the season. You can already see it's, it's working its way in. It's really hard to keep up with, so I'm gonna just you know, take it the, uh, the real strong route and just kill it all. You can see the beets are coming up here. They're doing good. Um, here was some cabbages. There's one here, one there, I think one over there. Um, they really don't seem to be doing that great. And then there were carrots here. I don't have a single carrot coming up. I'm wondering if these seeds weren't any good. Well, maybe there's a little carrot right there. Yeah, we might be getting a couple finally coming up. But, you know, these were older seeds that I had laying around. Uh, and you can see here's that grass, right? This grass just comes with these long tendril roots and just keeps going. So it's, a, it's, it's tough keeping up with this grass, especially when it's on the edge of the garden like this. Um, so I'm going to, you know, see what happens with this. This was more of an experiment when we talked about it, when I planted it. You know, this was just to see if we could get something to come up later in the year. Um, and I might not get anything out of this, and that's okay. But it does look like we got a couple of carrots just starting to pop up. So we'll, maybe we'll get something out of here. I don't know. We'll see. Um, you know, I got to keep fighting the weeds, though. There, there was no weeds on the ends of these uh, rows at the beginning of the year. They just consistently overgrow the area. So I'm going to come out here this week, harvest the onions, pick up all these weeds, get it taken care of. But for right now... Let's harvest this cabbage. Um, I got my pocket knife here. Get the pocket knife out. Let's take this guy. So the way that you want to harvest cabbage is you want to come in from the bottom, somewhere along the stem. So you look for the stem there. You can make that out very well, but that's the stem. Get this weed out of the way. Yeah, there we go. So there's the stem. 
comes up and kind of where it starts to go up. So the cabbage, what it'll do is it'll kind of grow parallel to the ground and then go up. Where it starts to go up is where you want to cut it. And it's pretty straightforward. You just kind of get in there with your knife and just cut away. And then you'll notice that it cuts off pretty cleanly. You can break the leaves off, the outer leaves, because you don't want those usually. Um, and when, when you break into it, you'll start to notice that there's usually some bugs. Like, yeah, there we have some snails, uh, some slugs. That's quite normal on cabbages because, you know, this is an area where these animals and these insects can get in there and be protected, right? So they're protected from the weather. They got a nice moist environment, perfect environment for slugs and snails. But rinse that off. It's, it's, twi it's quite okay. Uh, this is a good cabbage. Boy, this is a heavy cabbage. That thing's... I don't know, probably like eight or 10 pounds. Pretty heavy, pretty big. So that's a good, good cabbage. And then what I tend to do is I'll throw the leaves on the outside. So, you know, pick these guys up, throw them out, just to kind of clear the area. And that way, when I come through to, to weed later, you know, these leaves aren't in my way. Um, I like to try and come through after I'm done and get any weeds out that have been sitting in here growing. They, you know, the cabbage will hide the weeds. Any of these big plants will. Just because they're so large, right? They have all these leaves that provide some cover. So they'll, they'll kind of block out some weeds, but they'll also allow some little ones to take root. So I tend to do that, and then I can get in here with the scatter hoe and just clean that up. So that's that one. I think we do have one more still. Yeah, we do. We have one more right here. This guy's not ready just yet still a little smaller but that one will have to come out in a little bit as well okay well that's cabbage let's get the cauliflower head so cauliflower similar to cabbage you just want to cut it right below the head chop it off pick it up and uh the way cauliflower works that most people like to see it is uh to take off these bottom leaves so the way to do that is just to kind of break them. At least that's what I do. They break off real easy. And that way you'll just end up with that nice looking head of cauliflower like you'd see in the grocery store. Now this one is probably a few days past its prime. You can see that some of these um, florets are a little extended, right? See how they're kind of like long? But that's okay. This still tastes just good, just as good. Uh, it's got a little dirt on it from me. That's all right too. We'll just rinse that off. Um, but there you go, so nice head of cauliflower. All right, so cauliflower's harvested, cabbage is har harvested, let's go talk about some corn. So as you can see, our corn patch has been doing pretty well. It's nice and tall. Uh, the pumpkins that we planted in here are all starting to grow out. We do have one pumpkin over here somewhere. Yeah, right there. It's funny, we have that big wild pumpkin patch that's got a seemingly million pumpkins in it. Here's one, one that's pretty good sized. It's a good sized pumpkin. Uh, that's all we got over here though is just the one so the way that you can tell corn is ready is you want to look at the silks so like this one you can make that out the silks need to be dried all the way to the tip of the corn so this one is and then the way that you harvest corn is you pull down on it and you twist so you pull it and twist it and it'll pop right off and so there's a ear of corn uh, and we can do that down this line here uh, you'll notice that some are not ready yet. Like, look at this guy here. That's clearly not ready. Still very uh, green silks. Some of them are getting close. Like, this one still has a little bit of white right there. The rest of it's dry, so you don't want to pick that one. This one looks pretty good. Let's get this guy off of there. Uh, one problem with the, the pumpkins at the, at the base here is that it does make it a little harder to get into the, uh, the corn patch without stepping on a pumpkin, which is not something you want to do because you did plant those. So yeah, I just kind of walk down, take a visual inspection. What we got here, that one's got a couple more days to go. We picked uh, six or eight of these so far. They all look pretty good. Yeah, that one's a little there. That one's pretty good. And then you can see that they just kind of pop off like that. This one here is pretty dry looking. That looks pretty good. Pull it off and twist. Uh, most of this corn that I'm growing seems to have two ears per stalk, which is pretty nice. Uh, some of the ones that you'll grow will only have one. 
which is fine, right? It's just this, this variety seems to give us two, which is nice because you get double the corn in the same amount of space. Um, as you can see, sometimes you got to reach really far in there to get these guys. Here's one down here that looks like it's been knocked over. Maybe the wind got that. Um, surprisingly, and I'm going to say this, I wish I had some wood to knock on. Um, there have not been any raccoon attacks on this corn yet. Uh, we definitely have raccoon issues. You know, they're eating all my chicken food and doing other stuff. But they haven't seemed to have found the corn patch. And corn is like a raccoon's favorite food. They seem to find this stuff from anywhere. And they will seemingly travel great distances to get to it. So I'm very surprised that we haven't had a raccoon raid on this corn yet. Pretty excited that we're actually getting corn off these um, stalks before the raccoons have been able to find it. Okay, so just wanted to set that corn down so you can see what I picked there. Uh, here's some corn. You can make out it's a yellow and a white variety. Really nice looking. Uh, pretty good pollination, surprisingly, for only being two rows. Quite impressed with that. I was expecting it to be uh, more sparsely uh, pollinated, but it looks like it did okay. Not perfect. You can tell the rows aren't perfectly straight or anything, but pretty good for a two row. Uh, normally when you only do two rows of corn, it's a very good possibility that you'll end up with poor pollination because there's not enough corn, you know, around each uh, stalk to pollinate it properly. But it seems like we did all right here. So that's good. But all right, so we got a bunch of corn, nice head of cabbage, nice head of cauliflower, and a whole bunch of vegetables, you know, tomatoes, peppers, tomatillos, ground cherries, uh, a squash down in there. Really good harvest today. This is kind of what it looks like during the summer. You know, we're pretty regularly picking out of the garden here. The garden starts looking less and less, you know, pretty as the year goes on, but that's okay. We're here to harvest and grow food, not have a, uh, you know, better homes and gardens looking garden. I don't really care if it's super pretty or not. I just care that it grows us some food. The other thing I wanted to do is come in here and grab some beets. Some of these beets are getting way too big. So let's take a look at like this guy. Nice and big, right? Good fist sized beets. Here's three of them actually. They all grew next to each other. Normally when they grow tight like that, one or two of them will grow big and the other ones won't, but these all grew really big. Um, so let's take a look. There's a little one. That one's still a little smaller. This one's kind of big. Pull this guy out. So we got an orange one, a white one, two red ones. There's another orange one there. Here's a red one. Here's another red one. And uh, yeah, so I, I tend to plant these a little tight and then take the bigger ones out and then leave the smaller ones in. And the smaller ones will fill in the space after you harvest out the bigger ones. That tends to be um, a method that works well for me. You can see it's doing pretty good. We got a bunch of beets here. So I would say that if you're gonna grow beets, do the same. Um, throw them in there, let the biggest ones you know, grow out and then pull them out. And then you just leave the smaller ones in. And then a couple weeks later, the smaller ones will be ready. Over here, we have our big pumpkin patch that we didn't plant, right? Um, figured I'd show you some of the updates in here. So first off, lots of these white pumpkins. White pumpkins seem to be everywhere. Here's a really big green pumpkin. This one is starting to get blushes of yellow or orange. You see, I got a size 10 shoe and way bigger than my shoe. Very big pumpkin. Um, back here, we, it's, they're hard to see, but there are a couple. I if I can get over there somehow. I don't know if you can make it out from here. But inside there is some orange. There's a big old pumpkin in there. Um, there's several pumpkins in here that are all growing, doing well. Uh, let's see, there's some more. This one here is getting eaten by something. I don't know what's eating this one. Uh, looks like maybe slugs are getting to it. You can see there's another white one back there. And those ones that are getting eaten by something, I'm not really worried about it. Uh, we're probably not gonna eat any of these pumpkins anyway. So we'll just give them to the chickens. So if it gets eaten by bugs first, who cares? Now the white one. There's a big green one here. Uh, let's see. And then there's also a big white one here hanging off the side of the vine. So this vine grows up and over this IBC tote. 
and way down into the woods over here. These pumpkins have just grown like crazy. Uh, I don't know if you can make it out, but there's actually a pumpkin. Let's see if I can zoom you in. Pumpkin up in the tree there. Yeah, these pumpkins have just gone nuts. Some of them are starting to die back. You can see some of the leaves are falling. Um, I expect that to happen. It's late August uh, or mid-August. So they only probably have three, maybe four weeks of living left before we get our first frost. These will most likely all turn, these green ones will turn orange before, before them for sure. Like this one definitely will. That one's starting to get a little bit of color on the bottom down there. You can see a little bit of orange under there. So this one's gonna definitely turn on time. And then that one over there will definitely turn on time because it's, you know, it's, uh, it's turning orange already. So yeah, I mean, it's funny. I grew those ones down at the corn. They don't look nearly as good as these ones over here that I didn't grow at all. I just threw the pumpkin on the ground and the seeds just did their thing, let nature. But um, anyway, that was the update for the garden. Do a little harvesting. Thanks for watching. We uh, appreciate everybody taking their time to follow along with us. We enjoy making these videos and sharing our, uh, you know, our journey with growing food, raising chickens, raising them piggies back there, growing lots of stuff in the garden. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel. If you really liked it, feel free to share it with uh, other people. You click that share button. And if you do subscribe, click that little bell. It'll uh, let you know when we make our next videos and so that you can watch them. All right, well, thank you for watching. Hope everyone has a wonderful evening. See you later.